All right. Um, UNS integration to BigQuery, a little bit more detail. Take zero for part two. All right. So uh, yesterday I published a video back from the home office um, on our power monitoring solution that we have actually in our home lab, which is where we have our automation board. It's where we have our workbench, and it's also where we have our main bench, which contains our Opto 22 Groove Epic and our uh, Opto 22 Rio. We'll kind of show you like what control applications um, they're doing. Um, in that video, I, I did like a high level overview, and then I actually showed how to do a self-aware implementation, basically taking a Shelly plug, a brand new uh, Shelly monitoring plug, uh, configuring it in a couple of minutes, publishing it into our unified namespace where it gets picked up by our business logic, streamed up into BigQuery from Google, and then shows up on our report uh, running in Looker Studio Pro. Part of the reason I picked that power monitoring solution is I wanted to do uh, a video on building on a building automation application. The second part of the video is to kind of show you how the name that namespace lives along with our business. So um, when you when we look at UNS, it's single source of truth for all data and information. And that lab back at home is in the and the studio lab that we have here, they are that's a lab that's used by two companies, 4.0 Solutions and Intellic Integration. And today I'm gonna do kind of more of a deeper dive um, on the integration, and I'm actually gonna show you the whole UNS. So yesterday, if you watch yesterday's video, you'll see just what we were looking at locally um, while I was in the home lab. Today, I'm gonna to show you the full UNS. I'm not actually gonna walk through all the business topics because obviously I can't share that stuff publicly, but I can show you kind of how they work together. All right, so with that, let's go. All right, so real quick, this is our, you guys, hopefully you'll be able to see this better, but this is our architecture here. So um, let me zoom in here. So our main bench has a Shelly plug monitoring device. Um, uh, oh, I don't have an image of it. I thought I had an image. So each of our boards has a Shelly plug device. Okay, um, there is a board that is monitoring the power of, here, let me, um, and then we'll take a look at images, and then we will. All right, so this is what our, our plug looks like, okay, and each of our boards the power is can is monitored by a shelly plug okay so we have a shelly plug that's monitoring this board and then we have a shelly plug that's monitoring this board okay well we also have two additional shelly plugs um one that we dropped in Well, interesting. That won't let me make another copy. Don't know why. Don't care. All right. So we have a Shelly plug on each of those three boards. And then on the workbench, we have two sub Shelly plugs. So we have one that is monitoring um, the power of just this Optiplex, which is running our MQTT broker. That's the one we installed yesterday. And then we have another plug that is monitoring a vision workstation, okay? Um, <clears throat> that's what we showed you yesterday. And then what we have is each of those plugs, we went to their web servers. Uh, we went to their web servers and under settings, we went into MQTT and we configured um, the namespace that we want that plug to publish into, its client ID, and then the broker, which is running in our local environment. So all five of the Shelly plugs, all these five of the Shelly plugs, plug into our EMQX MQTT broker, which is running in a standalone Linux environment, okay? And then we have Node-RED, which is running, 
which is handling our lab power uh, solution. I'm going to go over that here in a second. Um, Node Red is monitoring the MQTT broker for changes on specific topics. And then we have our WireGuard VPN, which we're actually connected to right now. I'm back here. I'm back here in the in our Dallas in our Carrollton office, but I'm VPNed back in to the solution over there. Node Red monitors and then publishes all of the switches into our power consumption table in BigQuery. So if I take a look, that table looks something like this. So we have uh, the device ID gets plugged in or gets inserted. So for on each value, on each change, the device ID, the power, the voltage, the current, the total energy, the temperature in centigrade, the temperature in Fahrenheit, and the timestamp get published into our power table. So if I run, this, this will show us the most recent records. I'm going to go through the details of this more. So the last three changes, the last four was the automation board, all, all the automation board, the workbench, Optiplex, the workbench, and the main board they all changed um, in the last minute, okay? But you'll notice the sub one hasn't changed. It, well, the last time it changed was more than a minute ago, and it's because it's basically drawing no power. We don't have that unit running. So the power fluctuations are really slow, okay? So that's all being inserted up into this table here. That, that logic, I'm gonna walk you through the logic here. So the EMQX broker, looks something like this so i'm gonna this is the the full unified namespace um but we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at the home lab we have a function called power okay that's a functional namespace and then in there we have five nodes and our our logic is designed to look for node status switch colon zero and grab the json from that status and then our logic basically says for every node that lives inside this functional namespace, I want you to go check to see if uh, node forward slash status forward slash switch colon zero exists. And if so, grab the JSON and parse it, do something with it. So I'm going to walk you through that logic. So in node red, I'm going to actually show you the documentation here. So we actually have a documentation in code red. So the, this flow integrates power consumption. Um, actually, I can't go through all that. Let me just explain it real quick. Um, so the first thing that we're doing is we are dynamically reading the looking for the node. That's what this MQTT read does, okay? It is reading um, dynamically from the power functional namespace. If we add another, we, I could add 50 plugs in there. And all 50 plugs are going to end up getting read. All I got to do is just put them in, make sure they end up in that functional namespace, make sure I'm publishing that status, and we're good. Okay. Uh, we have a function that is running that basically takes the JSON and parses the JSON and gets it ready for insert into our uh, power consumption table in, big, in Google BigQuery. So this function is really basically simple. You know, we're basically making sure that the payload's a string, and then um, we're doing a JSON parse on that actual payload. We have a try accept, and then we're creating a new message, and that new message has a payload where we split the device ID, and we only grab the name of the device. So we're not grabbing the full topic, we're only grabbing the name of the device, which is the name of the node. We put that into a um, a, a key, the key is device ID, which is going to go into the column device ID. And then we have a power voltage current, total energy. We basically build our message. Then we have a Google BigQuery where we're actually using the, the open Google node library. And then we're doing an insert. We have a certified connection. Um, I, have cert I have a certificate running locally in the Node Red instance in Node Red. Um, actually, I should probably go do that in a later video. How do you reference that certificate from an ethereal um, um, container in in um, Docker? Because the certificate, in order to connect to BigQuery, has got to live in the persisted memory, not in the ethereal memory. But we basically build our message, and then we do an insert. So on every change, for every 
status topic, we parse, and then we insert, and then we have our ability to debug it. So what it looks like is this. So you'll see these are the messages that we've built. That's what, it, what was actually inserted in, okay? All right, then, um, so what happens is it ends up in BigQuery like this. It looks in this format, and then in Looker Studio, we've built a daily power report, and yesterday in the other video, I showed you how when we added the Optiplex node, which it didn't exist in this report, now it exists. One of the things that we did yesterday, or what I did yesterday, was I put in the logic to set reset the totalizers in the lab power. So that is here. So we're actually doing that over RPC. We have yet to publish this into the broker. We'll actually be pub publishing all these messages. I'm gonna do this in a later video where I'm gonna show you, okay, now what we're doing is a point-to-point -point function. So we're not going through the broker to do the re reset of the totalizers. We're actually doing an RPC call for each of the devices, okay? Now, what we're going to do, we, have, we basically have a monthly reset. So at um, midnight on the first day of the month, we basically reset all the totalizers for the devices. And then I also have the ability to reset, to do a manual reset on that trigger over RPC. What I will do in a later video is I'll take you through this flow, but I will also show you how to take the data that we created from this these resets and publish that back into the unified namespace so that those events are captured. Right now, we're currently not doing that. We're in, we're midway, we just wrote this, or I wrote this logic last night, okay? All right, and then in the daily power report, we can basically go ahead and look at our power consumption over time, so I have the ability, if I want, right now we're looking at all the data. So we started capturing data May 13th so, um, on power, and that was on the main board, automation board, and the workbench. So if I go back and let's say we do May 13th to May 16th and click apply, then um, there we go. Our charts update. Okay, what this what this field is doing is it's grabbing the the most recent record for each of the devices. So this is independent. What you see in in this chart here, right here, is independent of our date range. Okay. What this is the average over that date range for each of these, and then these are the trends over that date range. So if I go and I um, go from May 13th all the way to May 29th, which is today, and click apply, now what we're going to do is look at our power over that entire time. Okay, and this is just one of the reports. It's the easiest one to read. Uh, what you'll see here is the total energy dropped overnight because last night we tested the totalizer reset for the first time, okay? All right, so that is the, the basic gist. What I wanna show you is one other additional piece, um, and that is what does, the, what does the data look like, what does this unified namespace look like when we incorporate the business data, right? So what, we, what you saw yesterday was just the topical namespace for this specific function, the power function with the nodes. Now what we've done is we've also incorporated in, let me go ahead and get rid of this, we've incorporated in the business unit. So now we have four Pronoma Solutions with a business unit of IIoT.University. And this is actually the unified namespace that we use to manage our business. So this is how, if you look at all of our reports, all this data, by the way, also lives in BigQuery. We have tables for Intellic and four Pronoma Solutions. And I haven't gone over any of that and probably I'll try it, maybe try to do a lesson in Mastermind where we go use our actual business data, but I got to do it in a way that doesn't violate any agreements. So under IoT.University, we have our KPIs, and these key performance indicators are by month. So right now, we're only seeing May of 2024, and we have the last time the record was updated, which was 10 minutes ago. So it's, it's 1,300 was the last time the publish was done from our business logic. And uh, it will run at in four more minutes, and we'll see that update, and then we'll have updated data in there. We also have our IoT reports. So they're basically three reports, sales by day, subscriptions by day, and subscriptions by product. And then under there is all the granular data. So if I do, let's say, let's do uh, sales by day, then here I can actually, if I open up May, it's going to have a, 
a, a topic for, ev for sales for every single day, okay? Now, one of the things I'm gonna be doing later is I'm gonna show you how to build a functional endpoint for cloud. So right now, what we're looking at, what I'm showing you is our business. The, this would be a functional endpoint for cloud. Workbench status switch. This literally, every single data point that's in here except for our totalizers by minute, so the, the total power consumed by minute, Literally, every, for every key finds its way into big Google BigQuery. Okay, so into our data lake. Um, this this is functional, and that and that specific topic is meant for um, BigQuery. Okay, Th this is just these are just raw events. Okay, these are just raw events with no specific endpoints for BigQuery yet. Right now, what we do is we just store this history. We also do the same thing in Snowflake. We do it in Azure, and we also do it in AWS. Um, long term, I'm going to show in Mastermind, like the difference in cost, the what the integrations look like. We're actually using four different cloud providers to do the exact same function, and then we're going to measure it over time. I'll say this Google is, is for a complete cloud provider, Google's where it's at. I mean, um, especially now with what they've done with um, the MDE, the MDE solution. All right, and then w in addition to that, we also have Intellic. So Intellic integration, we have all of the sub-functional namespaces. The big one that we work with all the time is operations, the operations namespace. That contains every project, it contains every customer, it contains, you know, it, it the oper that, that operations, all of it's obfuscated, but all of the, the operations namespace contains all the reports. It contains, you know, basically everything. But what you have here is our 4.0 solutions. We have our home lab publishing into the home office, into the power function, right alongside our business logic, right alongside our business logic, publishing into... So our business logic actually operates up here. That's what this function is here. This is this is the business logic for Intellic getting into the unified namespace. This is the business logic for 4.0 Solutions getting into the unified namespace. The logic in here, the logic in here are merged together with the logic here for the power monitoring to give us that. Okay. And we have just a pure single source of truth all right all right with that um hopefully i, I part of the reason I, did, I wanted to show the data i wanted to do a deeper dive into actually what we were doing here number two i wanted to show you the the uns that basically contains business data with the power functional data all together um that and then um i wanted to lay the ground for for what i'm going to do going forward in terms of showing how to build endpoints for cloud integrations. I'm really walking a fine line in terms of how um, granular do I get with this on a YouTube video as opposed to in mentorship or mastermind. Um, so I'm, I'm testing you know, just how granular I can get and yet still maintain the audience for the video. Um, and then the last piece is I wanted to shoot it on, a, on my normal resolution monitor so people can actually see it. All right, with that, like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video and the previous video about UNS to BigQuery, and we'll see you in the next one.